come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like minded folks like you. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. Michaela is on assignment tonight. On assignment tonight. Mm-hmm. But tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Colin. What do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched, well, it depends on where well, you. Yeah, where, it depends on where we're coming from here. So yeah. got a couple names. Okay, yeah, right. let's, let's get into this. What's the first one? <laughs> okay, so originally the mm-hmm. way that it was known here for mm-hmm. years and years and years was Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Should, okay. we, should we get into the why yet? Why? Or should yes. we go to the second well, title? Okay, let's go to the second title. Okay. And then we got to okay. go into Air, yep. Andy yep. Warhol. Um, second so, title. Second title is Flesh for Frankenstein. Okay. 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 So that's, I think, how it was known in other parts of the world. And now I think the director, which is Paul Morrissey. Paul Morrissey. There yes. you go. And this is from the year 1973. Yep. Okay. So Paul Morrissey has kind of reclaimed uh, the movie. And so okay. now it is pretty much, I think, when Criterion Collection put it out in the 2000s, it was Flesh for Frankenstein. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Vinegar Syndrome just put it out it's flesh for frankenstein when you look it up on imdb it's flesh for frankenstein okay so that is the true nature of the beast is yeah. flesh for frankenstein okay. tell us about andy warhol yeah what does he have, have to do with this i have no idea what i mean i know andy warhol but what does he have to do with this right this piece of entertainment well <laughs> i mean like his whole thing so andy warhol you know had the uh, 60s artist right like, right uh kind of avant-garde i guess pop was art the pop art pop right? art, yeah, pop art. yep he had the famously uh, the quote that everyone's going to be fifty famous for fifteen minutes. He mm-hmm. which yep. are, I guess he coined came, the phrase superstar, right? Yeah. Andy Warhol he superstars, that, yeah. right? Okay, the factory, the yep. uh, the ultimate art distribution, like mass art distribution. That's where he did all of his prints and everything. Okay. Was the factory. It was a studio. It was a studio. He did you know his, his like Campbell suit prints, yeah. his Marilyn yeah. Monroe prints. He did, but they did movies there as well. So that's why I think a lot of right. people automatically assume it's going to be an Andrew Warhol movie because yeah. he did do movies well, in the factory. Yeah, but he didn't actually direct movies. Right, uh, but they were produced in the factory. Yeah. Yes. Uh, with <laughs> Usually with the factory hangout people, which is, you know, mm-hmm. artists and fringe folks and Drug addicts. Everyone and, just yeah. smoking dope. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, you Heroin. Like fucking Lou movie. Reed. And, you know, right. Uh, like so, Studio 54, but an art studio. Yeah, because right. I think that was the thing with the factory. I mean, it was yeah. actually, I think there were several locations that were the factory in New York mm-hmm. City back in the day. If you had told me that this Greek bathhouse he uses as his <laughs> laboratory was the factory, I'd believe you. Yeah. That feels like what it would be. It's pretty much just a loft. Oh, well, I think it was. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, like a it was loft. A loft. Yeah. You guys made it sound so much better. No, no it's no. a loft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which feels like the artistic way to do it. it just like it's the factory. It's a loft. Like, mm-hmm. An think, artist yeah. would do that. That's, Didn't yeah. they, it's like he had some like his parties were somehow like super parties. Oh, yeah. I mean, like yes. they, this I remember. Yeah. Yes. He invented, I don't know, different, uh, you know, <laughs> techniques of. You know, making parties. Different techniques to get high and yeah, have a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and he, a visual, yeah. yes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. ambient kind of Ooh, yeah. thing. How fun would that be? How trippy would that the be? Trippy, yeah. That yeah. Oh, trippy for sure. Lots yeah. of drugs. Um, so he would, I think, you know, these folks Q who kind of, <laughs> they, they gravitate toward Andy Warhol and they're kind of in his sphere yeah. and then like, you know, hey, we should make movies or whatever. And so Paul yeah. Morrissey is one of these people, right? Okay. Uh, a director who can actually make movies, but like their process of making movies was um, very improvisational. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, feel, just, I felt that. Yeah. And, oh yeah. For well, sure. no, no, this one actually uh, is the least improv. No, I was gonna say like a standard Andy Warhol produced movie would have been almost entirely improv. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. Like here's the the gist. Now run with it. Right. Yeah. This is where we yeah. got to get. Right. Do whatever you need to do to get there. And some of those titles are things like Andy Warhol's Bad, Andy yeah. Warhol's Trash, Andy Warhol's Heat, you know. Yeah. And I think a lot of them actually starred Joe D'Alessandro, who's in this. Mm-hmm. It seems Joe D'Alessandro is like the uh, through line that hooks <laughs> yeah. all of these movies together. Is he like this in every movie? Yeah, because, I mean, that's why, you know, so 
I get the this impression. This is not a knock on him in any way. Well, but he comes <laughs> off as like a non actor. Yes. He's very. Uh, he's, he's a guy from Brooklyn in every movie that he plays in, I'm guessing. Like, yeah. I mean, I was watching him in the later scenes in this. It's like, okay, you know, he's able to like convey. He's a, I mean, he's be- a better actor than some of the other people in this. <laughs> but. I think, I feel like Sean put it best when he said, this is the room and that's Mark. This is, okay, that is the, like, the conclusion I came to yeah. within the first 15 minutes of watching this, is that this is the 70s version of The Room to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, like, almost perfectly. Yes. Like, if you watch this movie that way, I think you'll enjoy the hell out of it, if you love The Room and that <laughs> stuff like that. Okay, you'll well, enjoy the, the hell out I, of it. I guess that, you know, so conditioning, so someone who doesn't know what this is, I mean, you yeah. say Frankenstein, yeah. and I they're had like, no idea. it's a horror yeah. movie, but is that true? Is it a horror movie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would say it's a horror movie. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I was going like it was more like an absurd. Like I don't. It, I it was, is absurd. Oh yeah. I think, it's like, absolutely I think it has absurd. all those elements. But it, it has. Absurd. It has. I remember. I keep thinking of a line from Creep Show. It's Leslie mm-hmm. Nielsen. He's like, "Is that camp or kitsch, Harry?" You know, it's like uh, right. This is a brand of humor. Which I'm like, it's not entirely deadpan comedy, yeah. but it is like the music's very classical. The, uh-huh. the the set design and all that is like, you know, it's very professional. Uh, but there's like a level of humor in this that it's not supposed to be like laugh out loud funny. Maybe it was to me. Yeah. It, OK, <laughs> so it's like, I mean, it's, but a, it's I mean, it's taboo humor. Is okay. what it, it is. gets to those points. Yes, it's taboo humor. So it's like it, it's which again is on par with the factory and Andy Warhol. Yeah, Everything sure. is very taboo. It so it's, it's not to... the only humor in this, though. I mean, they get humor out of just glances and looks with eyes. So it's not the, the taboo humor. Humor is definitely in there. Do you? I mean, obviously. do you think that was more actor choice with the the looks and the? But the, it was it had to be encouraged by right. It had to be Paul Morris. So. Right. Uh, I mean, I'll give it up for the editor. I think the editor is the unsung hero as far as that goes. <laughs> which you know, shots to take. Yeah, I mean, because it just seems like the the performances are calibrated toward being like very over the top. Yes, you have a mixture of actors who are actors and actors who are not actors um, of different ethnic backgrounds. Just yeah. kind of like eh, we're not gonna, you know, because usually I guess from the, the movies of this time, if they're foreign. Uh, they have they just dub everybody. Yeah, uh, this hmm. one's just like no, you're gonna speak in your native. Uh, Thank the fucking lord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, why? Why didn't they do this on? Uh, you know, uh, I would. Yeah, some, uh, some of the Italian ones where you'd have heavy Italian accents, and then probably somebody from America in the movie instead yeah. of dubbing everybody, just like, hey, yeah, yeah. No, I, I appreciate the juxtaposition of the fact that it's in Europe, and we've got someone who's straight up Brooklyn and someone who's straight up German. Like Juxtaposition is a great word for this right? movie, I it's, think. It's, yeah, there is a great juxtaposition there. Yeah. Yeah. So they're aiming for out, outrageous, right? They're trying to, the, it's trying to provoke, maybe, or whatever. It's like, we're just going to be, because this movie did get an X when it came out here. It was I like, would think I so. It. I would I think so. Yeah, It was yep. banned for in his, Britain. For as much time here. as his hand uh, was inside her I, stomach I was going to say for as much time and sound as spent in his armpit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> I think the tongue probably gave him the X, the tongue in the armpit, I would guess. I yeah. mean. Dear I Brailler, think- if what I've just said <laughs> intrigues you at all, <laughs> Stay That's with right. us. So we're going to go. I mean, this is this is going to be a weird one. Stay, right? with, stay with us, guys. This <laughs> yeah. is going to be. Um, it's going to get uncomfortable. <laughs> so Andy Warhol, I guess, uh, um, had nothing to do with this movie. This, well, oh. I, again, you know, now, you know, he's long gone and mm-hmm. Morrissey is still around. And uh, for years, this movie was unavailable uh, because Morrissey, the, the, the story that I was reading was that he didn't want to have anything to do with his movies anymore, you know? You ever see Spike at Bensonhurst? I was gonna say, what else has Morrissey done? I think it was like a lot of those, um, you know, factory movies. Okay. Yeah. But then he also, I think one of the later ones he did Spike at Bensonhurst, maybe in the, it might have been about Surfers in the nineties or I something. I remember one. hearing the title, and it was like, I think that was one of his last. <laughs> I love his range. Yeah. <laughs> Surfers and then this. Yeah. Um, but uh, well, I mean, I think you know the other ones were like these uh, New York, like very New York singular uh i don't know okay, see, i see, don't even now, know if they were now all or... i'm picturing is frankenstein but with surfers yeah oh damn <laughs> like everyone talks like a surfer but frankenstein <laughs> that's uh, all i'm but, picturing but now. only if they did it in like 1975 i don't want to see that today because right. somebody would fucking ruin that right well, actually i suppose in some ways then this is like th- you know this might 
Well, this and one other movie <laughs> might be, you know, the the outliers of his filmography where I don't think people really gravitate towards the other factory stuff that he did. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could be wrong if you guys are out there and you're like, no, Paul Morrissey is the director of bad or trash, you know, uh, <laughs> he is the director of trash. I'll give you that. <laughs> but this one, uh, and well, okay. so this one was, uh, uh, I think, you know, that maybe he's more well known for it. He was apparently Morrissey was friends with Roman Polanski. Okay. Right. So uh, okay. in, in this circle of people, mm-hmm. who would, sure. And I think the story is that Polanski uh, suggested that he'd be the perfect guy to do a Frankenstein movie. Mm. And so somehow they were able to get the cash together to do Frankenstein. And they were going to do it in Italy. And while they were there. the castles are. Yeah, because you're going to give it that kind of look and whatever. And while they were there, they're like, okay, but, you know, if we're going to do Frankenstein, then why don't we also do Dracula? And so they got like, I think, I can't remember if it was, they got double the, the money to do two movies uh. in six weeks. Jesus. So it was three, three weeks for one movie, one week off, three weeks for the second movie. That one's called either Blood for Dracula or Andy Warhol's Dracula. Okay. And it has uh, Udo Kier, who's also the star of this movie, Arno Jurging, uh, who uh, is Otto, Otto, right? And uh, Joe D'Alessandro. Are in that one as well, and Polanski shows up for like a cameo in that one. So they're like a companion piece. It's flesh for Frankenstein, and blood for Dracula. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then it was just kind of strange that now you know they're, they've been released on video. They they came out in these. Um, you know, if you're a film collector or whatever video collector, they came out in these like super deluxe 4K. You know, we've got every single version of it under the sun right. from two different companies. Severin Films put out Blood for Dracula and oh. uh, Vinegar Syndrome put out Flesh for Frankenstein. That's, Interesting. That's weird. It is kind of strange. Um, but now you can see these movies. Are they worth it? You're going to have to wait until the end of our broadcast. Spoiler, Colin what... owns it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. Very deluxely, but, I would say. <laughs> I first saw this movie as a 3D aficionado. I thought you were going to say as a three-year-old and yeah. I was Oh, yeah, it be... scarred me for life. And, Jesus. Yeah. That <laughs> so, wouldn't surprise me. That would explain me. actually everything. Yeah, yeah I was that's, like, that would not surprise Colin's me at all, story. actually. Sorry. Sorry. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Colin, okay, yes. Well, we'll have to unpack that. <laughs> I'm sorry you have to discover things about yourself on air, but yes. Um, as a 3D aficionado through uh, most of my life, and I, you go back and we've done several true. 3D movies, but um, there was a time when I was trying to get my hands on uh, anything like the 3D on video that you could watch, mm-hmm. right? And there was a period of time in the 19, late 1990s that the Japanese came up with a video system called VHD, I believe. And it was like a laser disc. (laughs) VHD? VHD. It was some kind of laser disc system. You know, the old thing. I don't know if you guys even remember this. Laser disc. I remember laser disc. I remember laser disc. But before laser discs, there was a technology called video disc. And it basically was like a record that played a movie. But it came in a hard plastic shell. It was like a, it looked like a record album, but it was hard. And you had to put, the shell into the machine, the machine would take the disc out of it, and then you'd take the shell out, and you'd watch half the movie, and then you'd have to put the the <laughs> shell in, take it out, you know, flip it over, feed oh it back God. in. Oh, yeah. I that love was technology. video disc. <laughs> and the Japanese had a variation of this, but theirs included the ability to do this in 3D, and so they released a whole fucking shitload of 3D movies and somebody pirated them and put them on eBay. I was getting the VHSs of this shutter glass version, you know, color 3D yeah. thing. And I came across one of them was uh, Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. So that was the first way and first time that I saw it and became aware of the movie. And so I know that I've been hunting for this one for, <laughs> you know, 20, 20 years or so. Right. Uh, 30 years. Uh, <laughs> until finally <laughs> it's available. Um so yes so all right jump in i'm jumping in okay Feet first let's do Holly this. looks like she's about to get, like get into a, a, a fight a, a real discussion here <laughs> okay so i mean i guess that's the thing I, like we're saying it's outrageous we say taboo humor mm-hmm. is this movie um tasteless yeah 
on purpose. Yeah. On purpose. Yeah. Like it is deliberately trying to gross yes. you out in as many ways yes. as possible. Okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. So whether or not you find that an entertaining experience or you're just shocked and uh, <laughs> grossed out by it. Right. You know? um, okay. So this movie, it, it is a Frankenstein movie. Um, but it's sexy Frankenstein. As they would want you to, not as <laughs> you experience it, but what maybe they want. Or it's definitely a theme in the movie. Do they? Do they, you think that they, the filmmakers, think that it's sexy? No, I, I think it's very deliberately. Um, like it's not it, erotic. I guess no, that's no, what I, you know okay. when you say sexy. I'm going with is it an erotic movie? No, no, it's supposed to no. be like off putting in a arousing way like like the characters are aroused and they shouldn't be and that's supposed to gross you out right there's a lot right. of naked people in this movie yeah. uh yes. which is going to make it a challenge for me to find uh photos the <laughs> photos to put on our social media well, get your cropping <laughs> tools ready you'll get it <laughs> um yeah we're gonna have to blur something yeah. or facebook's <laughs> gonna freak out um yeah so it's not like it's not pornographic no i wouldn't even i don't know if i'd call it a soft core movie because it does actually, it seems like it does have something else on its mind that it's going after, that it is trying to be like you know, this weird combo of horror movie with excessive nudity and sex yeah, um, and comedy. I don't know, am I wrong? It doesn't seem like it's trying to arouse you. No. I, it's no. got characters who are aroused by yes. weird, you know, but things. This is what I meant by sexy. Yeah. Like okay. With, with okay. them. Within them, but like, there is the sexiness going like on. The, Not for us. You're yeah. right. But like in general public standards, people aren't going to necessarily understand that. And they're going to look at it and be like, no, it's pornographic. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it was rated X. I right, think that right, was the, right. The, yeah, in the, the technical time. term of uh, pornographic, yes. I would say yeah. so... B- within um just putting this stuff like right in your face whether it be the nudity or the gore in this movie Mm -hmm. yeah the gore there is a pornographic element to it but again like if you understand any of the artwork that was done around andy warhol and the factory and everything like you should expect that Mm -hmm. you know okay this is my first experience with the factory so sure (laughs) sure um you should watch factory girl okay that's a good one for you to watch about ed sedwick yeah. Okay. You should watch it. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Sienna Miller. Okay. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. For that. So it's the like the whole it's um, like the story Lou of Edie Sedgwick and her like yeah. rise to fame and everything the and her Velvet relationship with her relationship with Andy Warhol and yeah, okay. yeah. Bob Dylan and yeah all that right. stuff. You okay. Watch it. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, all right. So I mean, it is a Frankenstein movie, but uh, it, it takes a lot of liberties with the <laughs> uh, source material. <laughs> I'd say so. Um. So in a lot of Frankenstein movies that we, even some that we've watched in the show, like the, the original, uh, you know, there's the story by Mary Shelley and then there's the like, uh, you know, Hollywood versions of Frankenstein where the mm-hmm. doctor's kind of like a misguided scientist who <laughs> makes this horrible mistake and creates this thing that becomes like a, you know, a, a bane on society. Right. And Frankenstein. Then, yeah. The monster is not the monster. The doctor's the monster. Well, I think it, it goes more that way. Like the 30s one, the Boris Karloff one, I think the, 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 the monster is still the monster. Well, yeah. Yeah. But by the time you get to Hammer films, then it that's then, when it's like... Right. Frankenstein know, is the monster. Yeah. The doctor's the monster. The doctor's and so this monster. one's kind of going on that mm-hmm. uh, way, I think. Only yes. this is our first like Nazi Frankenstein. He <laughs> is very German. <laughs> he's so really, German. This he's is the other reason. German. And it, this is the other reason I call it the room because he, he, it's like he's... Uh, he's Tommy Wiseau in this movie. Like he is, he's got outbursts. He's got monologues. He says weird shit. <laughs> like if he did the whole "You're tearing me apart," it would have fit this movie. Oh yeah, yeah it's yeah, a Frankenstein yeah, yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Get it? Like he's playing that version. It's very German, very over the top. Uh, I mean, I personally loved it. But how do you know Udo Kier? I know. I mean, Udo Kier shows up in. I've been seeing Udo Kier forever. I mean, he shows yeah. up in horror movies. He shows up. You know him. If you've yeah. ever seen him and heard him speak, you know Udo Kier. Yeah. But I like uh, most of the more recent stuff. Obviously, he's getting older now. But, yes. you know, it's like, most, I mean, even going back to, you know, like the 90s. And because he was one of those actors, I think, who, you know, is able to work internationally in different countries productions. He's done big budget, you know, American things. He's mm-hmm. done, you know, uh, foreign films. uh 
but he always seems a lot more low key when I think of Udo Kier. Yes. And kind of sinister. I think like he's kind of got like a reputation for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's how I view him. Yeah. But this is like a different Udo Kier because uh, he's a lot younger yes. and he has a lot more energy. And the guy apparently does not know like, uh, or, you know, or was not directed to like ever have like a top. on. No, there's no ceiling to his performance. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. But like there shouldn't have been. No, like it fits perfectly yeah, with this. Yeah, if he was just like playing it straight, it would have been a really boring movie. I mean, b between the gore and the nudity. Like, yes. You know what I mean? Because his uh, he's what keeps me going through this movie. Yeah, like I am energy, never bored watching him in yeah. this movie. His energy carries the, yes. the the movie in between the taboo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, it's like just watching him go absolutely. I mean, it's one yeah. of those kind of bug-eyed, you know, yeah. performances where yeah. a lot of things are shouted with your eyes open as wide as you possibly can. Even when he's not shouting with his uh, being uh, overly over the top, like he's just the things he's saying. And it's kind of perfect because with his accent and everything, it all mixes into this very like, I don't know, it's um, he's got a rhythm to him and, and the things mm -hmm. he's saying in this. Like, yeah, you kind of can't take your eyes off him on this. Yeah, it's almost like psychotic episodes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I like that that yeah. he's because obviously he knows that some of the things that he's saying are absurd, right. right? And he knows that the tone of his performance has to be like just up right. there yeah. in the upper registers, right? But he's so like um, I, I don't know if it's convincing, but it's uh it, like the actor he's committed. Mm -hmm. I guess yes. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like he's committed, even though he's saying completely ridiculous. Oh shit yeah, no, I at believe the top him. of his yeah. lungs. He he's never like winks to the audience no you know no. like i'm i know no, no, I'm no. Saying yeah something no, it's, goofy. like he's on a stage but this is shakespeare yeah like oh yeah <laughs> you know oh yeah there's even a point where <laughs> right. we were i think they all visit in his wife's bedroom later on in the movie and it's just a single shot but it's the three of them and it's set up like they're on a stage yeah and he's and it's a moment in time where he's at almost uh one of his most manic moments when he's talking to his wife i think he slaps her at this point um, but yeah, that's very stagey, but that is, yeah, the performance he's giving in this. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of it I felt like had a kind of stage bound uh, yeah. look yeah. to it. But, you know, some of that's maybe for the, um, you know, the benefit of the 3D photography. I don't know. I mean, like in 3D, I would say so. this movie does look really good. It looks it's not, really good. It's not like modern 3D movies where everything's kind of shallow depths. It's yeah. got the like. Super depth, you know, things go way behind the screen and yeah. come way out of the screen. But the way that they position um, the like the backgrounds, foregrounds and all that stuff, it's like this is pretty well shot. It's done by uh, Luigi Cuvelier, if I'm butchering oh. his name, but he was also the director of photography on Dario Argento's Deep Red. There it is. They filmed it in, uh, <laughs> in Italy. So, of yeah. course. This yeah. movie looks great. Like I was surprised at the the clarity and the three D. It's not too dark. And like you said, uh, yeah, it looks good. I was gonna say whoever restored this movie did a very good yeah. job. Yeah, and now it's the three D film archive. I guess yeah. does yes. this kind of thing. And they also made a uh, anaglyph that's the red and blue version, yeah. which is currently available on Shutter. Uh, uh, so this they put out both the two D and the, the red and blue three D version on Shutter. With uh, Blood for Dracula. I think you can go and watch the companion. Interesting. Making sure to get yeah. the flesh out there. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, okay. So this Frankenstein, I say he's a Nazi, but it, not like literally, but no. he, he has, uh, he's in pursuit of the Serbian perfection or whatever. The Serbian. That's what he calls it. A yep. creature that will serve the Serbian ideals or something, which are completely yeah. like, you know master race yeah uh, I like uh, yeah yeah and you, i mean hitlerish he does say like they will uh obey me they only listen to me they will be under my control and, and he, he's looking for the children that he's supposed to have in his mind so yes he's obviously not a nazi but he's very the ideals are he's the got same. the same they made him the yeah. same he's a fascist let's yes. put it that yeah. way yeah. there you go <laughs> they, made, they, made, him, they yeah. made him a nazi without calling him a nazi basically yeah, yeah. um so What's his plan? What uh, what what does Frankenstein want? He wants to create <laughs> man and woman, and then have them mate to create the ultimate children. Yeah, he's trying to make the perfect, like you said, the ult like the ultimate race, the yes. perfect species. Yeah. So, so he is the putting together, yeah, like the children he should have had because he has kids. They're yeah. just not good enough. And I think they, I think they know that he thinks that they do because he's very open, very open when they're talking about them. the children. Yeah, like at the table. 
Oh, did we not forget to mention he is bickering with his wife slash sister? His wife, sister. sister wife. Yes. Yeah. No, wife, sister. Wife, sister. His sister, wife is a real thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we have to say wife. Sister. Wife, sister. Okay. So maybe explain to me the dynamics of the Frankenstein family here. What do we? What do we got going on? I think it's uh, the same thing that applies to royalty. <laughs> Just keep it in the family, so we can like, have all the property and everything. Yeah. But like. More so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a deeper connection. Yeah, maybe because so. you know, royal family, like it's still gross, but it's more like you know, marry your second cousin, third cousin kind of thing. No, this right. is like brother sister. Yeah, they're sharing mother yeah. and father stories at the dinner table because we were. I was That's confused at this point. I'm like, wait. <laughs> They have kids, but they talk about their parents like it's their parents. Yeah, and not like, like ah, the in-laws. Right. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, our mother and father. Yeah, and then yeah. later on, he does start referring to her as his sister. Like, oh, no, they're fucking brother and sister. Yeah. That's disgusting. Because yeah. then you start to go like, well, mother and father are coming to visit. And remember how they used to do all this stuff with us? And you kind of see like there's this generational thing happening where, you know, it's like, are their parents also brother and sister? It's them, and then they they have these two kids, and the kids are weird. Okay, <laughs> yeah. The movie opens with a title sequence, uh, and the uh, kids are like dissecting dolls and shit. Yeah, they are. It's like they've been secretly watching their father, and they're yeah. uh, copying what he's doing, and they're taking dolls and taking stuff out and transplanting. Mm -hmm. It's adorable until the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't really say anything. I think the boy. No, they don't say anything. One, the boy has two lines, which is like no father. No, no father, no father. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I was like, oh. We're just gonna uh, keep going like that, okay? And uh, Italian film, uh, Ital Italian horror aficionados will recognize uh, Nic uh, Nicoletta Nicola Elmi. Uh, hold on a second here, because the Saturday Night Freak Show uh -oh. Wall of Fame custodian MF Mad has let us know that Nicoletta Elmi uh, has been featured on three movies that we have done here in the basement. Okay, one of them is being Nicoletta, the wife. The little girl. The oh, the redhead. The, red the, little the little redhead. Who, if you watch Italian horror movies, you will recognize this Was she in the Beyond? Face. No, but... Fuck. Damn it. She should have been. Because uh, <laughs> there's a redhead who gets her head blown off in that movie. Yeah. yeah. yeah I know. That's the Nicoletta Elmi part. Yeah. But it wasn't played by Nicoletta Damn. Elmi. Okay. Uh, but she was in uh, this, uh, Deep Red. She was the little girl who... Um, she ends up leading the guy to the house. Okay. Whatever. I think she was like, she stabs a fucking lizard and pins it to the ground or dad yelling. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, and okay. Uh, she was also the uh, grown up 10 years later. She was the usher in demons. Okay. Okay. But okay. if you are a, a Italian horror film, you know, fan, you will, you will have seen, okay. you'll recognize this girl, but she's in it because they filmed it in, in Italy. Uh, Interesting. So she's on the wall. There's also a lot of like uh, the implication, I suppose, that um, the kids are doing what the parents are teaching them, right? Yes. There's right. also that that is has something to do with like the Baron is teaching his creations, but also by example teaching Otto, which is the Igor role, yes. right? Hmm. And uh, then you also have. Joe D'Alessandro, the farmhand, is kind of teaching his friend by leading by example in right. the uh, the ways of uh, uh, of the, the ways flesh. of the world. Yes, yeah. the ways of the mm -hmm. flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is that kind of thing. Basically, saying there's like this. Uh, I don't know. Like, how do you read this? It's like there, there's this kind of arist arist aristocratic. Uh, like upper crust that's just corrupt as all hell, oh. and mm -hmm. everything that comes from that is just you know, uh, screwed. Like the kids are all yeah. screwed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like society's just gone to shit. Like yeah. there's no there's no good uh, thing here. Which is a methodical statement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. Paul Morrissey, director, yeah. working something in there. Um. All right, but it has to function as a horror movie. So um, in order to get the body parts for his um, creations. Yeah. He's forever searching for the perfect nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> and I, he stops and yeah. then says it. Yeah. Like we, the perfect nozzle. Yep. <laughs> what? And we're like, what the hell? What it, first of all, what's a nozzle? And then we think, you know, nose. Yeah. Like, I think there's a black metal band that took their nozzle from, yeah, from this That's movie. That's great. 
Uh, I just really wanted him to call it a schnoz. Schnoz. Yeah. yeah. So he's going that, looking for the. No, that's Mel Brooks nose. territory. That's, that is Mel Brooks that's territory. That's so true. Young Frankenstein was like the year after this. <laughs> and yeah, it I was. couldn't help but when I was watching this, you got bodies being taken out of tanks and just the kind of the look of the, you know, the, the set, this big ass, I mean, it's a big ass laboratory yeah, set. Yeah, big. It reminded me, I'm like, did Rocky Horror Picture Show, like, did uh, was it Richard O'Brien mm. like see this as like a part of an inspiration for how he was going to do some of the? That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> but didn't Rocky? I think that the play Rocky Horror may have come out um, around the same time that this it came might out. Have. So it could have been the other way. Maybe yeah, you know, these guys know. saw Rocky Horror. Um, so yeah, so he's got. I feel like there was an orgy of ideas, and <laughs> all these things came out of it. Let's just say. Yeah. I know you hate the orgy talk, Holly. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, we don't get orgies. It just never in this goes movie. well on this show. That's all I'm saying. Oh, that's very true. Orgies are never a pleasant thing you, on this show. Yeah. <laughs> but at least point. you don't have to deal with that in this movie. An orgy of dead bodies, maybe. I mean, that does happen at a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, I guess, the taboo that they don't go into. But they. Um, so. He, Dr. Frankenstein has a uh, assistant named Otto and uh, he has a female uh, body yes. mm-hmm. already prepared. And so he's looking for a head uh, with a perfect nose, mm-hmm. apparently that has a Serbian nose. A powerful nose. nose. Yes. Yeah. Like for power in that but nose. he's also looking for a sex, uh, a sex, not a, a sex, a sex minded, a sex minded, a sex driven yeah. male, like, yeah. or also one who he's, has an yeah. energy that draws people. He's basically looking for Casanova. Basically, yeah, he's he's, for. yeah and he's trying to create. He that. wants someone that knows how to like finesse a woman. And, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so, whose head does he pick? <laughs> the one gay character in yeah, this movie, the gay yeah. guy, which obviously. is hilarious this, that, is, a this guy. is that guy they picked for this purpose like you can see the problems based on what udu kir has said what he wants and what he's going to get you can see the uh troubles that will come from it That's oh, the hijinks. oh the hijinks this is a will comedy ensue. right <laughs> i mean because so i good. laughed a lot during this movie so i don't know what that says yeah because uh joe d'alessandro then is a farmhand who works on the property from brooklyn he, a farmhand from brooklyn right yeah <laughs> somehow like in the middle of in europe yeah uh and he has this buddy whose name i can't even remember i don't now, remember it either. but uh and and he wants to become a monk right oh yeah this is the guy who looks like the he's like a low-level lannister from game of thrones is yeah, what he looks yeah, like kinda, yeah yeah but uh in order to um i guess uh D'Alessandro's character takes his buddy to a brothel yes. mm-hmm. to instruct him on the ways of like, you never come with us to go, you know, we go with the girls or whatever, because D'Alessandro's like getting laid all the goddamn time. Yeah, it's like he, fields. It's, it's one of those guys, he can't help it. And like, he just kind of falls into it, whether he wants to or not. And those it feels like most of the time bitches. he doesn't want to. <laughs> He's just like, oh, they just fucking want me for my body again. This is horrible. Oh, yeah, that's I mean. the look he has on his face. I mean, she was just a local girl. She was passing through. You right. know, it's like, what? What was I going to do? <laughs> just let it go through and not fuck her? Come on. That's what. It, that's the energy he's giving No, off that's this. the movie. But, <laughs> yeah. right? but very movie. calmly, very stoic in this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, is it? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then again, that's where you're like, okay, is that like his acting range or, you know, whatever. But either, yeah, you know, he, either he comes or off. at this point, doesn't matter to me. Whether yeah. it's purposeful or that's just him. Killing it. So he takes his buddy to the brothel, and the Frankenstein is, of course, like, you know, this is where we're going to find this perfect guy. Right. We're going to go to the brothel and watch. And they see what happens. Like, okay, a, a lizard. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Brooklyn dude's fucking a uh, couple of ladies. And a lizard and crawls a out lizard, of his ass. A lizard crawls into the bed, and they kind of freak out. And the women like jump out of bed naked and run out the front door. Yeah, like you would. Like you would. Mm-hmm. And, and the lizard is shoved into. There is some very purposeful 3D in the camera effects in this movie. Sure. This lizard is one of them. Yeah, yeah. I love that stuff. They don't do oh, that yeah. kind of gimmicky 3D anymore. Yeah. No. Damn it, where they just <laughs> linger on it yeah. in front yeah. of your face. But then our lovely um, gay gentleman comes out the front door, and oh, they hear screaming. Oh, yeah, 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 so they think he's, yeah, doctor, like, really giving it to him. Yeah, like, is, yeah. he, her, is he beating someone in there? Yeah. <laughs> they hear screaming. It's obviously because of the lizard and they're afraid, but they right. think it's, you know, they're having a good time. So the gay gentleman comes out to 
get the girls to come back in, and they assume he's the one that was giving them so much pleasure. Yeah. Two women? He must be very powerful. <laughs> I can't even do the accent, but I mean, these are great, you know, Udo, Kier oh my God. lines. The power. So they're yeah. like, okay, we got to take his head. Uh, that's Is that the goriest scene in the movie? It's, the bl- it's one of the bloodiest. Oh, like, the head. I thought we were still on the lizard. I was like, what the fuck happened with the lizard? I don't remember. Oh, no. Oh, no, the head. The head, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got his uh, garden shears. And so he just kind of takes it off. And he, yeah, it's fucking bloody. And they linger on it, too. They're just like, yeah, yeah, because he's he gets his head taken off. The body struggles. He bleeds out for like five minutes. Yeah. The body struggles a lot. It's Body's, it does. Like, do you remember in Hocus Pocus when Billy loses his head and he's yes. like flailing around? It's kind of like that, it, but basically. spurting blood. Yeah, but yeah. That, I think, you know, when this kind of comedy, right, it's like it's so gross. You're just like, Jesus Christ, this yeah. is gore. <laughs> yeah. It's spurting blood. But the fact that Otto has to club the body, <laughs> to, you know, after they've taken the head. That's, like, um, <laughs> yeah, that's some Monty Python shit, right? Right. There. No, yeah. I was literally several times during this. I was like, this is like the pornographic bloody Monty Python. Yeah, basically. Like it is. You just uh, uh, someone a light just went off in someone's head because you said that, Holly. And they're just like, that's exactly what I wanted in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, we got a movie for you. Yeah. Uh, So he loses his head. Yeah. And so that means that he's going to take it back and and sew it to his creation Mm -hmm. uh, and and finally put this thing together. Okay. But there's the whole the sister has like a whole subplot. Oh, man. Does she? And these these two things are eventually going to come together. So (laughs) there's a lot of that going on. A lot of that going on. Mm. There's a scene where Udo Kier peach, uh, apparently reaches his uh, sexual peak. Yeah. Uh, while fondling the the what what is he fondling? The gallbladder. The gallbladder. There it is. <laughs> the gallbladder of this woman giving us and the <laughs> greatest line of the movie. No, nah, not even. No, the that line, was oh, that was after. You know. Well, after? first he 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 like he oh cuts he does that her open. And yeah, I forgot this scene is split between another scene in the middle of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And massages her guts. Yeah. Yep. Which that uh, apparently is what turns the Baron on. Because the Baron yes. seems to have like this uh, attitude towards sex. Every time it's all filthy. Yeah, it's like he filthy whores it. And, you know. Yep. And, yeah. and even the wife, uh, his wife parrots this publicly. Not privately, though. Mm. Privately, she's got a whole different mm-hmm. thoughts about this. Which apparently like, he did not know. Because he says at one point, it's like, you have this interest in sex? I did not know this. Yeah, you're a sex maniac. Well, yeah. he does say that he knows about like her, because she says, like, you know my interests or my, you know, right. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's like the sex maniac. But both of them, I guess he has the more like feverish, like, and it's not like but anti-sex, it, yeah. but he sees well, sex as like this uh, dirty thing, uh-huh. yeah. you know? And again, it's, it's very much a commentary on like the upper crust and their closeted ways you know every, True, yeah. on the outside everything is very conservative and very proper and then behind doors they're like freaky as fuck yeah this is yeah. what the royals do Queen yeah. Elizabeth and everybody yeah this is their lives if, when, back if, when, Holly, leave when her, they were let's young and sexy leave her out of if you're listening to, <laughs> to this Sorry, broadcast to uh yeah give us write us stories about your uh your freaky uh kinks uh, no, no. You, only Unless we're talking about prince harry in which case yeah. okay then. i'll i'll be part of that conversation <laughs> uh so um so that's basically the thing right like uh he ends up well he ends up like uh yeah he he gets his hands like up inside the uh <sighs> the creature yes. the, the woman and then he like uh then he dry humps her for a while he dry humps her and we're like yeah. going okay so he's dry humping this like dead body but uh, she, i guess she's watching. kind of alive Otto is ex- is taking all this stuff in. This goes on for a little bit. There's the idea it's that Otto's scene. a virgin and doesn't understand like how sex works, right. and so he's kind of learning, you know, because there's this mm-hmm. whole talk about going, you know, what brothels, you know, when the doctor was a boy, he went to the brothels and I know what to do, and then he ends up like dry humping this uh, this creature. body, yeah. but then we realize that he wasn't actually having sex with her like you know normal people do. <laughs> You're right, he wasn't. Because his ultimate release is uh, the the movie's greatest line. Because it's like, what the fuck? To no death, Otto. You have to fuck life in the gallbladder. And uh, anyone who's seen this movie, I think, like, knows that. Uh, How do you even come up problem. with a line like that? 
I don't know. That's because it's just goofy. As uh, that's yeah. That's uh, I was not it, expecting. I, <laughs> I've never been so happy to not have a gallbladder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Holly was just grossed out. Yeah. At this, but yeah. <laughs> um. Also, all right. So the wife's story as well, because uh, I forgot his name. Johnny Brooklyn is going to end up being like she calls him up to her room because she finds him on the side of a hill. Yeah, they're going to have a picnic with a bunch of apples. Oh, yeah. A bunch of apples. Yep. She takes the kids for a picnic, even bunch though she does apples. not want to because she hates her children. Yep. Um, finds him uh, banging a passerby. Yeah. Like she was just walking through that was that um, and decides that she wants to see him in the castle. Uh, the she, next liked, she liked what she saw. She liked what she saw. <laughs> She'll never admit it. Uh -uh. I mean, it, I mean, later, <laughs> later she does. But she gets him up to the room and she's trying her hardest to get him to sleep with her because she's like, I mean, this, bitch, all, she this bitch is him. thirsty, thirsty. <laughs> she, she threatens him. And then he's like, yeah, whatever. I don't need you. And then she's like, my friend was just killed last night. Right. And then she's like, oh, my dear, I'm sorry. Well, she's like, you stay here. She's and, like, you must be so strong. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's doing everything. And then she finally, like... And she, like, gropes his arm. She's like, oh, you are. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, because he's she's got like, that. Like, and you're so handsome. You're so handsome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It's a... I really... I, you know, like, uh, on second watch, watching that scene, I'm like, that's, like, a really good scene. It's a great it's scene. It's calibrated in a way as her... You know, that seduction that she does... Yeah. Does go through, like, this kind of... You know, it's she's, a journey. Yeah, she's had, like her a insecurities. Journey. She's wearing like, like she's wearing like full on like fancy lingerie, and she's like, "I'm sorry, but I was awake, and then I went back to bed, and now you've caught me like this." Right? She gives that thing. It's <laughs> like I got out of bed this morning. I didn't feel well, so I got back in. Thank you for coming here and meeting me in my room. <laughs> it's so it is that whole thing. Like you said, it's the peaks, valleys, everything. Uh, she's feeling all that stuff trying to get him. It's really good. God they were it. they were writing dialogue for this movie on the day. I bet. <laughs> I bet. No doubt. Done in three weeks. I can't imagine that. Wow. This whole thing. I mean, I guess like, that's why you have big sets and you can just, find most of your action there. I just, I just want to be on that set to hear like, okay, what's my motivation? You're tired of fucking your brother. That's your motivation. Go right. with it. And you see an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Go. And this dude walks in. That's your motivation. <laughs> yeah, because a heart of gold. Yeah, and she ends up hiring him as like the manservant of the house, right? Because um, then she has like, I took it upon myself to hire a manservant. Uh, I've seen him work, and I'm <laughs> going to put him to work. You, you I've know. seen him work. He does very well. <laughs> and, uh, you won't even notice it. That yeah. line was very subtle. I'm going to keep him very busy. That line was very subtle and much appreciated. <laughs> it feels like he's a gigolo. It's a, do I start work now? You know, like right. yeah. it's a, but like he, he, because he's got no emotional attachment to any of this shit. Yeah, which is great. It's a great way to play it. Even if his acting ability is not that good. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, no, yeah. I think that's just how he is. And they were like, well, that's why we're hiring you. <laughs> right. I, yeah. You can hire someone. You can find the perfect part for someone's acting level. Yeah. And yeah. I think they did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> or they for wrote what? it for him based yeah. on his I acting. Think, yeah. Like, yeah. I know yeah. you. I, I love the way you act. I want to put you in this. Because maybe they found him as fascinating as I do watching him in this. Well, he ends up, uh, of course, at dinner. He sees the the male monster Who is his, his friend. Is right. his friend? He's got his friend's head. So, <laughs> but my friend was much shorter than that, <laughs> which is a great. <laughs> like, no, nah, he's much taller. <laughs> I'm putting on an accent. I'm like, he's did, not that. Did thick. they actually give that? Like, because that's where I w I hadn't noticed if the guy was a tall he guy was before. Slouching. No, oh, okay. and to match the height. And of when his they other friend. and when like there was the scene that he was helping him because he was inebriated. That was a different guy. His, oh. head, his head was down. You could see the wig. That was a oh, different yeah. guy. He was, oh. His hair was different. Yeah, 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 that was a different guy. And to try and actually make them comparable yeah. Uh, right. sizes. Yeah, that's why he was like, he was the same height as me. That scene specifically okay. was to show that they were the same height. Oh, gotcha. Because yeah. he is a rather tall gentleman. Well, and very tall. Day. And once very uh, tall D'Alessandro sees this guy, he's like, okay, I know that, you know, A, the, the, the Baron's the guy who killed my uh, my friend. And there's something hinky going on here, and so he needs to get into the laboratory. I mean, I I, I got to give the guy credit. He's keeping his cool. Like he watched, <laughs> he woke up to his decapitated he friend. Not. Like he woke up to his decapitated friend, and then he gets hired to be a male prostitute all within an hour. Yeah, this is like a day. Yeah, and then later on that night, he's serving his decapitated friend dinner. I'm just saying, he's really keeping his. He's cool. had a day. Yeah, he's had, had a day, day in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Wow. There's a funny scene where um, the the doctor and Otto try to get um, 
the two monsters to mate. Yeah. Yeah. Kiss him. Yeah. Kiss him. And they that just, is they that keep... is a long scene. It is a long scene. <laughs> uh, they. Um, that's what this movie. And is. she's they kissing linger. him on the chin. Yeah. Right. And because he's so goddamn tall, I assume. Very true. But they, she kisses him, and they just look down. And it's like no erection. Kiss him again. Yeah. No erection. It's like what's wrong? This is not the sexual monster that they wanted to create. So then they get the idea that somebody must have tampered with their yeah, perfect obviously. creation. And the who could have done that but D'Alessandro, they assume, right? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't their fault that they fucked everything up. Right, was- no, not at all. <laughs> what have they done? So this begins, I guess, like a, is it a comedy of errors? This is the, compi- <laughs> you know, the, the uh, compounding set of circumstances that leads to this, like, I don't know, it's like a big ending where you know everybody's gonna die by the yeah. end of this is it, fucking is movie. it a comedic set piece that they keep talking about how no one can get into the lab but yet everyone can get into the lab the children walk in the <laughs> everyone the, the, the maid walks the maid, in everyone opens the door and just walks in at yeah. a certain point it's like literally he, he everyone for privacy i don't think he did yeah no literally everyone within a mile radius can get into that fucking lab it sure yeah. seems like they all yeah. end up there at some point uh, and there's like more than one way to get in yeah yeah, yeah. there's yeah. like multiple ways to get into this place i guess that's the thing that uh D'Alessandro ends up like kind of befriending or recruiting the kids who are yeah. helping him get around. Right, because the, the kids castle. are like, well, fuck our father. Like, I'll help you do whatever you want. He yeah. doesn't like us. But he does get into the laboratory. Oh, no. First of all, sorry, the maid gets in. The maid does. Oh, yeah. Um, the maid. You may recognize her from Cobra Kai. <laughs> As Hawk. She looks exactly right, like it's Hawk a perfect from Cobra representation. Kai. You could draw the, the lineage down to it. It's pretty on. We should have checked that out. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uncanny. Hollywood <laughs> histories. But Otto attacks her because he's, you know, uh, he, he's testing out his um, abilities at this point. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I don't know. He's Because he's trying to, because like you said, he's never had sex before and he's been watching everybody and all that stuff. So he no, tries to. Yeah, he's been watching one person. One person, yes. He's been watching the weird doctor. The one, yeah, the one doctor who's been cutting people open and sticking his hands yeah. into people and all that stuff. So he, he tries hasn't watched, this. He hasn't watched actual sex yet. No. So he does not know what he's no. doing. No, this is very. Very true. He thinks so, this is what sex is. Yeah. So I guess. Yeah. So it's a little uh, cuts a little weird, but does, so does he like slit her open to? Yeah. Okay. I, I think I, so. I didn't see a knife or anything. It just it's, kinda, like, it's a it, weird I cut. Think they're well, like pulling people open with their bands. Yeah, that's, that's what it felt like. I was say, later on, they suggest that he does it like with his teeth. So oh. I'm wondering if he did that with her. I don't know. I don't know. It's really weird. But she is disemboweled and. Yeah, because he doesn't have any blood on him. I don't know what the right. fuck, but the yeah, idea is he's trying to fuck her in the gallbladder, yes. I assume. Fails miserably. That is a sentence that was just said on the freak show. That's right. Because <laughs> it's the the flesh for Frankenstein. Uh, yeah. We're going all the way. Uh, <laughs> fuck her in the gallbladder. And so it skull. kills this poor woman. <gasps> yeah, don't you bring Grease 2 into this. Don't you dare bring Grease 2 into I've this. Done I've done it. Mm, we get three, mouth. 3D guts are dripped through a grape. Uh, oh yeah, there's it. that. There's oh yeah, they're dripped. Oh yeah, because yeah. you, you like the the bat scene. The bat scene was great because the, the bat kids, scene scared Sean. They, no, the bat scene, I, I, unexpected because the kids <laughs> break in to steal a hand. They yeah. just broke in to steal a hand. Sure. And then they're trying to leave through the same way they got in, which is through like well, a back room and everything. they're dissecting dolls. Well, I guess so. Yeah. They're moving on in their work. They're, True. Yeah, they're evolving. But then those, <laughs> one of my favorite things, the uh, the bats on a stick where you can, you know, where they just kind of fly in and their their wings are moving. It's the low rent uh, bat effect. But it it's in 3D, so they're coming down from the screen and everywhere else. It was really good. But one of them comes from, it seems like... It Behind come, me. Yeah, it comes from like the it audience. Comes, yes, it comes <laughs> from the audience. And I'm like, whoa, was not expecting that. That was I love good. it when they do tricks like that. Yeah, you know, it's like taking advantage of that that uh, space. You know, it's like oh, yeah. it looks like because you remember. Did you see House of Wax? Did we watch that one? Yeah, the Vincent Price one. Yeah, where there's like Charles Bronson at some yes. point like stands up. It looks like from the audience and runs into the screen. Yes, that was a pretty cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. But this is like the same kind of thing. It's like you can yeah. also throw stuff into the screen mm-hmm. in three D. Um, yeah, there was a good um, many years ago in like Universal Studios. They had a birds um, attraction that was in 3D, so it kind of felt like this, where you'd have all the birds flying around in, in Hitchcock's thing, flying at your face. Kind of the same thing. Nice. That's if good. you're gonna do it, take advantage of it. Damn it, do a movie yeah, in 3D. Do it, do it yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the um, the wife, the sister wife, wife right. sister, wife sister. Yep. yep. Right. Um, she ends up like 
escalating her perversions, right? I mean, right, because the she's farm boy comes in and is like, like talking down to her, and she gets mm. pissed because she's you know I'm upper crust, I'm above you, farm boy. Yeah, but he's like this fucking place is crazy yeah, and like he's killing people, yeah. slaughterhouse, I'm getting out of here. And so, yeah, so he's he's on his way out. So she needs a new yeah. a new toy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's it gonna be? Well, obviously the gay character. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> yes, they make an agreement between the Baron and his wife. That yeah. What does he want to know? Who, who went? Yeah, who, who got who into the ta- laboratory? Who tampered with my bodies? And she's like, "Well, I assume it was Brooklyn, and he's probably in there right now." Yeah. Yeah. She's like, "But what are you going to give me for telling you?" And then she wants. She wants. She's like, "Will they listen to me?" And she's like, "Only if I tell them." That was more Arnold Schwarzenegger than a anything else. Bit, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going more Austrian. But and then, uh, so they make a deal. Just like, all right, you tell me, and then I'll make him. Uh, well, I assume be your servant. The the Baron assumes that this is going to basically uh, teach the monster how to have sex, right? And for the sister, if anyone can teach him, it's my sister wife. God <laughs> yeah. damn it, my wife's sister. God damn it, Don't she can teach. Them, huh? I know. Wait, Sorry, this, Mormons. Sorry. Is this also kind of happen in Young Young Frankenstein with the Terry Gar character? Okay. No. Anyway, all right. So leave that out of okay. this. <laughs> um. So the monster uh, kills her. He does. Yeah, because she's in. She brings him to bed, but then because her purpose is that she wants him to do whatever she tells him to do so this feels like she's gonna train uh train a sex slave to be exactly what she wants them to be but <laughs> as we notice this seems a little awkward because you gotta tell that thing it's really every weird. single thing okay you know do you ever like you know the exercise i think they teach this like management like schools and stuff where they're like okay teach teach me how to walk me through how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you have to start out saying like okay Use your right hand to pick yeah, up that yeah, loaf of bread. Yeah. Oh. Open the twist. You have to like give him very specific instructions. Oh. And that is what she's doing for this yes. sex scene. And it yeah. is so goddamn uncomfortable. It is. <laughs> it is. And I mean, he is a, uh, uh, a laboratory creation, so he gets confused. And when she says, hold me tight, hold me tight, he squeezes the light. And cracks her yeah. And cracks spine. her, yeah. yes. But did he get confused? Because no, I get no, the impression that there is still, the guy is still in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he hates the situation. That he, he wants to in. die, as we learn later. He tells yeah. his friend when uh, his friend comes in, you know, it's like, I'm going to get you out of here. And he's like, no, I should be dead. I'm more like them than I am like you yes. and this whole thing. Uh, but it does seem like he knows who is responsible, mm-hmm. you know, and so he's going to kill them. Yeah. Uh, and so he kills the, the wife's sister. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then Otto, left alone with, uh, they capture uh, the, the friend, D'Alessandro. Brooklyn. They, they, yeah. Brooklyn. They hook him up, uh, whatever. So he's dangling over the set. And this, <laughs> I imagine they just left him there. For yeah, it feels long, like it. Doesn't it? For a day, you know, as they were shooting this. And he's all very calm about it. His arms must have hurt like hell. Yeah. Right, man. And Otto has this warped perspective that the- i've been watching people i know the sex <laughs> i know how it's done i'll show you and then he proceeds to show what he thinks is sex on the female monster which right. is it, they they do a fake entrails. out where he's like oh he's he because there's the the shot where he goes down below screen on her but then he it's a cut to licking her giant staple wound where she's right. been put together very uh, well i was gonna say sexily but it's not sexy at all no, but just yeah. a lot of tongue in it a lot right. of wild tongue um on a scar right yeah. and then he's just like and then he goes with the uh, uh fucking the gallbladder right and he reaches into her and he pulls her open and her guts fall out and he kills her yeah well, and so she's well, on the yeah. floor. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. <laughs> You're right. Well, yeah. Yeah, because uh, well, that, that put me in mind of there's a scene that we uh, skipped the over. Yeah, yep. the oh, yeah. I was just thinking that we skipped over it. Yeah. Where Brooklyn is in bed with the um, wife's sister. And yes. I don't know, like, what. Because, you know, you're sitting there going, like, these people don't know how to have sex. But I get that it's. <laughs> No the comment. They're people. exploring all areas of sex. Yeah, Big <laughs> I was like, I was like different ends I of the spectrum. I was like, do they not know, or is there something we don't? Know? I think yeah. something yeah. we don't know. It's like this is on the outer limits. Because so. earlier at the brothel, she was working his knee like you wouldn't believe. That's very true. And that's not something I've ever <laughs> seen or heard of or experienced or, experienced yeah. or tried. 
Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe a knee thing. Uh, and should we, go. Okay, right. but should we be learning sexual <laughs> things from this movie? No. no. That's the key to it. Okay, so we're going right. to dis- dismiss all so that. So later on when she is literally like assaulting his armpit <laughs> and there are... <laughs> That's basically a sound clip from the movie. Yeah. 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 For the sound minutes. editor had a lot of fun, I think, with that scene. <laughs> like, yeah. it was like a half second away from her giving him a raspberry, right? Yeah. It kind like, of felt like it. It was real close. Oh, it's it was like too much tongue in Because I'm like, yeah. why in the fuck? I mean, obviously, it's like, but I wonder, you know, when, so when they, How did when he they keep a straight face. When, I don't because. Know. I don't He's think they, not that ticklish. sound is put in after the fact, yeah. right? This is a right, joke still, that was created but her, but her, in the editing room. Nah, but her vigorousness in doing it but was still, also like, had to be part of it. I wonder if that was because like they put them in this weird, uncomfortable position. Yeah, they're not 69ing. Like, they're about 33ing, it yeah. feels like. <laughs> in order to compose the <laughs> shot no, I'm, for the, I'm laughing, the, it's true. the camera <laughs> and protect like certain body parts, yes. that, it's like a weird... Certain body parts, we just saw full frontal. I know, I mean, that's why yeah, like, we saw... He walked into that scene. Yeah, like... He walks in. He's full frontal. And yeah. we've already seen her. So who are yeah. they hiding? But this, but uh, that's what I'm saying. The, the 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 positioning, I assume, was to do something so you're not just flopped right, out. Right, but on can the... also get them both towards because, the oh, camera because he's supposed to be aroused and they can't show that. Maybe. And he's or she's like in a weird position where yeah, the only thing that she has access to is like his armpit, and so she's. But we see you know, she's tongue in his armpit at some point, and like the so the sound editors when they see this scene later, they're like, "This would be a good joke." Yeah, and they put these slurping sounds yeah. on it, and it goes on for ever so long because he's having a conversation with her. Yeah, it's yeah. an acting scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This would, yeah. Let's see if these two have chemistry together. This would be a great uh, uh, audition scene. Yeah, it's oh great. God. Or it's, it's not. It's some. It's it there. Is, it is it's, on. It's it crazy. Is something I have not seen before. <laughs> In and likely will never see again. Mm. Indeed. Um. But anyway. Uh. So. Yeah. We've got. Uh, uh. Sister wife is dead. What wife sister? Wife sister's dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Frankenstein freaks out yeah. on Otto. Right. And strangles him. Yeah. To death. Female Frankenstein's dead. Right. Frankenstein comes. Uh. The doctor comes back and sees right. that Otto is killed and strangles him to death, which right. we get a nice three D shot of. Auto's his open tongue, mouth. Right. You know, his entire tongue. Tongue. top of his yeah. mouth. So now yeah. we've got Dr. Mitt. And they all fall yeah. down on each other in a pile. Like dominoes. Yeah. As they get killed. Right. So now we've got Doctor, we've got Male Creature, and we've got Brooklyn. Yeah. Yes. And the Doctor is... And Brooklyn's still tied up. Brooklyn's still yeah. tied up. And the Doctor turns to the other monsters like, kill him! Because he's still trying to order him around right. and everything. But he won't. Yeah. And instead he ends up taking the Doctor's arm off. Or his hand, his hand. Oh, his hand. He yeah, slams he his chasing. hand on the door. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second, I think, bloodiest scene in this, because he bleeds a lot. Because it's too. just oh, yeah. all over the place. And He's the, trying to reattach his hand. I kept thinking of that scene that Austin Powers, Mike Myers doing that. Oh, ah, ah, from the, you know, like when he was faking his hand was off. <laughs> it was like, ah, ah, ooh. And, uh, oh no! That, no, that was from uh, "So I Married an Axe Murder." Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I was yeah. like, I missed that from Austin Powers. Yeah, yeah. I did too. I'm like, so no, I married yeah. an axe murder. Yeah. <laughs> yes, with the little ham or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. In, the, got, like, in, the, in the butcher like, shop. Yeah, in the butcher me. shop. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh so this gives Udo Kier a moment to like, uh, you know. I mean, like, I I enjoy these performances, but he wasn't <laughs> just doing that. Like, he goes on to to begin a monologue. Well, because he he throws his hand. It's like, you fucker! <laughs> it's all your it. fault! <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, the height of hysteria, and then the yeah. monster impales him. With a spear? Which brings, I think, his gallbladder. It has to be his gallbladder. Into okay. Into the audience. They clearly don't realize how small gallbladders are. <laughs> because that was the size of a liver. Could have been his liver. Could have been, yeah. Okay. We don't know. know. I was like, I hope it, they didn't... I hope they weren't trying to say it was a gallbladder. Because gallbladders are literally like this how big. Dare they? Thematically, really tiny. it should have been a gallbladder. Thematically, it yes. been okay. a liver. This is now on the edge of a spear, yep. which is in your face, you know. But as, it's in your face, and then as, but then he monologues yeah. for, for a, a long five time. Five more minutes. As he's doing it, it's the way they're shooting it, it's like, straight on, but he, it's moving. Like, the end of the spear is what's in your face, but it's moving around as he's right. monologuing. This is <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> and... And finally, he croaks, and then we're like, in position, yeah, on his knees, yeah. Yeah. on his knees, yeah. with the spear coming out of him. And so the monster then uh, is like, well, you know, because uh, uh, Brooklyn's yeah. like, give me down, 
You know, well, I can get you out of here. Yeah, he's can... like, what are you going to do if I get you down? He's like, I'm going to take you to a real doctor. We're going to fix you. We're going to make this better. And he's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 He's the other lackadaisical one in yeah. this movie. Nah. So he's he, like, he, I'm more he, dead than there. I don't belong here. He uh, unguts himself. Yeah. Which, uh, there's got to be a, t- a technical yeah. he, term for that. I mean, yeah. We get a close up of like all of his guts falling out. Yep. yep. Um, and and he, he's down on he, the pile. So now we're like, and well, Brooklyn's fuck. just hanging there. Yeah, just he's hanging screwed. Yeah. Are then, all, all the characters gone? But thank God the kids. Oh wait! No, no. We forgot about the children. Oh, uh, the children. The, the children future are still alive. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so we're like, okay, well the kids are going to come down because obviously they're friendly because yeah, uh, they helped him. Yeah, yeah. But it turns out that uh, see, it's like, is it passed along insanity? Is it? I think it's more a critique just on uh, you know what uh, you what witness. kids pick up. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. You know, the insular kind of world that, right. you know, yes, because this is family. all that yeah. they know. Yeah. And so, why not continue? Yeah, the on world doing conditions that? you, like, you become what, yes. what surrounds you. So, yeah. they both yeah. walk in, both pick up scalpels, and then proceed to crank him higher up on the thing that he's hanging from. Yeah. And. Well, because that would tie in with the first shot of the right. movie yes. where they were working on the, they were working the together. stuffed animal. The, yep. Now the dolls, they're going to yeah. work on an actual guy. Yep. So right. it's like, it's fucking bleak. <laughs> yep. Fucking bleak. Yeah. Children. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. It's an interesting, uh, yeah. And then just end. End. And, 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 and get the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. End. All right. There it is. Fletcher well, Frankenstein. All right. Well, that means I guess we'll go around the table and tell you whether or not we recommend that you watch Flesh for Frankenstein. But before we do that, we're going to have to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name, ironically enough, is Igor. Hey. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Igor would like you to know that um, all characters in this movie are not based on real people. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna ask, how do you think he feels about this? He movie? is not a fan of the way he is portrayed in this movie. Right? It has nothing to do with him. And he would like you to know that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good, good news from Igor. He did uh, not sign off on this movie? No, he did not. Okay. We should probably let you good folks at home know how you can also contribute to this part, portion of our show by uh, following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Adam Kaler writes in and says... That Flesh for Frankenstein is a movie for all the gallbladder enthusiasts <laughs> in all of us. I may needed to have washed my eyes out for five minutes after watching it. Baron Frankenstein must have watched Dead Alive to get an idea of two zombies being able to pr- produce offspring, and the dude needs to dream higher. <laughs> uh, Michael Whitaker writes in. He says, I'm reading the description of this movie, and all I have to say is, but he also said udo kier is patrick bateman and andy warhol's american psycho yep yeah there you go uh peter get says i get the feeling the saturday night freak show crew won't like this one as i think it's too outside the box for their combined taste but i'm happy to be proven wrong we shall see yep Owen Johnson says, the blood of these whores is killing me. And then he says, wait, that's the wrong Udo Kier, Paul uh, Morrissey film. That's blood Dracula. for Dracula. Yeah. Uh, and he says, oh, by the way, about Looper, I remember uh, the trailer for it had dubstep in it, it back did. in the dubstep boom of 2012. <laughs> it did. I like that trailer, though. Uh, Action Dude about Flesh for Frankenstein said, uh, it sounds like something I would watch if for no other reason than to completely kick the shit out of the worst ogre of all. The one named Boredom. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. That, so, was, that was tedious, I, I my friend. Think I think we're still walking that joke. Uh. <laughs> Dumb is D-U-M-B. Boredom. Uh, about uh, last week's movie, which was Looper, uh, Chris Huddleston writes in Judd. and says, this has to be Bruce's last great movie, right? Before he I started doing so. all the direct uh, red box or whatever stuff. I was thinking about that today, that unless I'm sure maybe somebody can point out something they like, but I think this might be like Bruce Willis's last really good performance. I mean, you, gotta, uh, so you guys haven't seen Death Wish. It is like a major sure. Hollywood movie. I, I think that's the last one. Okay. I'm like, I'll this one it. was like, I mean, before that, I'm like, what What else you got? I'd have to go look at his Yeah, IMDb. we'd have to go look through yeah. it. Yeah. One was Surrogates. 
Oh, fuck that movie. Okay. I, yeah. uh, tired Silver <laughs> saw that writes in and says about Looper, he says, it's a girl talking about Looper. That's got to be a first. Michaela, you are officially my YouTube wife. I'm... Then he says, I told everybody about it. No one will watch it. Laugh out loud. The movie made its rounds in the silver stacking community. As we all believe, silver will be the first commodity to be wiped off the face of the earth. And therefore, the price will be per ounce will be tremendously high. Fingers crossed. Oh, that sounds like a, a tired silver is the name. Right. His username. Like, oh, okay. There you go. I mean, I'm a girl. I like Looper. You, yeah. didn't, you, yeah. didn't, bring, you like, didn't bring Looper, though. I didn't bring Looper. But she correct. likes Looper. But she yeah. likes Looper. I think yeah. a lot of I think a lot of different people like Looper. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we posted a image of JGL and mm -hmm. Bruce oh, Willis yeah. sitting across from themselves right. said, what would you say to your younger self? Sure. Sean Rogers says... It won't really make you go blind. <laughs> <laughs> not, that doesn't sound like there's like, I lost a little bit of my sight, but I'm not blind. That's what that sounds like it's saying. Like, I can't see the signs in my, you know, around my neighborhood anymore, but you'll be fine. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says, empty out your 401k, take the cash, find Elon Musk, invest in Tesla, and come back to the future a billionaire. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, that's... If there that's were no uh, more pressing matters, like Rainmakers and Loopers and right. Death and all that stuff, then yes, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, the B-Movie Vault says uh, his advice to his younger self would be drink better tequila. I mean, always find good tequila. And Don't drink that. Tall Hayden says, uh, diet and exercise, and then I go all back to the future, too, and tell him sporting results so I could make a fortune. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Uh, without warning was the movie we watched before that. <laughs> uh, Brett Williams, our science co correspondent, says uh, <laughs> that I don't really have a science report, but a science fiction report. I was watching Misfits of Science on NBC on Friday nights, just like Colin did back in 85 or 86, along with Knight Rider and then Miami uh. Vice right after. The 80s were littered with science fiction <laughs> and fantasy shows that lasted one season. Mm. Uh, there was Something Is Out There, Alien Nation, Isaac Asimov's yep. Probe, Auto Man. I remember Auto Man. Hmm. I remember Alien Nation. I remember Alien movie. Nation, yeah. Manimal. With Simon oh, I remember Corp Manimal. Dale, he turned into the Panther. Uh, the Highwayman, where he was driving the invisible truck. Uh, Voyagers. We've been trying to get Manimal for our network. Because <laughs> it's great. Because it's Manimal. Uh, v, the series, Otherworld, the Phoenix, Werewolf, Wizards, and Warriors. That was a TV movie, though, and others. Network, primetime sci-fi and fantasy didn't finally reach its golden age until the X-Files and the 90s oh, ushered yeah. it in. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Seth Rogen going to make a Manimal movie, but I, it was going to be a I joke? Thought, yeah. I thought he was. I thought so. Yeah. Well, that, well, that warning was so memorable. As soon as you said that, I was like, I don't think I was here for that one. I brought that <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Good well, wow. Woo! Travis Legler. Alien! Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but Travis Legler is going to clear up some confusion uh -oh. about the movie. Okay. So he's saying, is Jack's last name pronounced Palance or Palance? I've always said it was pal Palance. That being said, my friends used to play this fun game of taking audio quotes of actors and playing them in other movies. And I think we would use a lot of Jack's lines from City Slickers and Batman and maybe even Cops and Robertsons, play them over actual lines in the movie and have fun. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Well, Jack, Brett or uh, Travis, I looked it up. It is Palance. It is yeah. Palance. Yeah, it's Palance. Palance. It's okay. easier to say Jack Palance because it flows off the tongue. Better, yeah, because there's Palance. a Lance in there. Yeah, I've always like said Palance. Palance. You were right. And right. then every time we talk about it, I think I'm wrong. So I'm just like, oh, I guess it's plan. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I never. Stuck in my head. All right. yeah, I could never figure it out and commit to one. Never second it guess yourself, kids. That's ever. Right. <laughs> Palance. Okay, I got it. I'm going to have it from now Palance. on. Uh, now, Nelson Nascimento says, is it just me or does the alien appear to be some outer limits influence or does there appear, appear to be some outer limits influence on this design? I would say yes. Yeah, I, I googled agree. the images right after you mentioned that. I was just like. You know what? Yep. You've got a yeah, point. Yep. For sure. Does look like it. And uh, Jacob Laws believes that the little alien uh, discus things look like one of the Langoliers. That's from Stephen King's oh, I don't know what a Langolier looks like. I don't know what that looks like. I've either. heard of the Langoliers forever, yeah. but I don't yeah, know what they, they look like. Yeah, like. they eat time or space oh, or something like that. They, they do actually kind of look like... It was a movie. Uh, Jimmy Smith was in it. It was like a TV movie. It was movie, a TV movie, movie right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because nothing says star power like Jimmy, Jimmy Smith. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had success with it, and they're like, what else can we do? And Langoliers, I think, <laughs> right. is the next one up. 
All right. Well, again, thank you all each individually, mm-hmm. sincerely for writing in. We yes, really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. My favorite part. Yeah. Well, now we're going to go to your second favorite part. Mm, sure. We're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with me. <laughs> oh, big stretch. All right. That's um, what I say to my cat. Well, big stretch. I know. Big stretch. Oh, big stretch. That's what I had right now. Um, Wow. Uh, uh, Paul Morrissey, Frankenstein 3D, Flesh of Frankenstein. I had a fucking blast watching this movie tonight. Um, ah, I mean, I've seen this cover f- of this movie forever. Um, I did not know about this movie, and I, th- I, I laughed at it. It is, um, I mean, it's everything we said tonight. Uh, I had a really good time. There are some moments where it just like. The mixture of of blood and nudity is not my favorite thing in the world. Yep, and it does happen a little bit in this movie, which uncomfortable. Are, yeah, it's un, it's off putting. It's a little uncomfortable. But the rest of this, I think, is great. I, there's great moments. I love the uh, over the top acting. Udo Kier is doing fantastic work in this. It is an over the top trippy ass movie. Um, it's it's crazy, but I can't. The energy of this movie, I think, is really great. I think Udo Kier is really bringing it. Um, yeah, everyone's doing great in this. I was never bored by it. The energy kept me going through it. I had a lot, I had a lot of fun with this movie. Can you say you have a lot of fun with this movie? I feel like, right. I feel like if I admit how much actual fun I had with this movie, people might look at me weird, but I had a fucking lot of fun with this movie. The humor of this movie is the humor that it it got me. It, It really made me laugh. Even in the smaller, quieter moments of it. Um, yeah, I think you should watch this. This is movie is great. Uh, again, I don't know what this says about me, but this is a really fucking good movie. <laughs> I want to watch it again. I want to watch Blood for Dracula. Um, yeah, because if it's anywhere near this, like I think I'm gonna have a good time. Um, yeah, you should all watch it. This was good, Holly. I'm surprised. Like it was. I had a real fun time tonight. <laughs> um, it's funny that you say like I, I don't know what that says about yeah. me because halfway through this movie i was like going in my own like headspace thinking if the people in my life like saw this movie and they were, and they knew that this is the kind of shit that i watch for my podcast <laughs> like what what would they think uh, that's what i always wonder <laughs> because it feels like we're in a little like sometimes in a little bubble outside yeah. of uh, all you dear people who write in and talk to us and everything yeah it kind of feels like from our regular lives this kind of feels like a bubble sometimes mm. and if people looked into this bubble they'd be like are you are you okay like no like it's a it's like a legitimate <laughs> thing i was thinking about this the other day i was talking to my friend forrest and he was just like I like movies with a happy ending. I don't like sad movies. And I just stared at him. And I'm like, if you only knew what I watched for a hobby. If you only knew what we've seen. Like, if you only knew. Like, your poor little head. Like, you, don't, you couldn't handle it. I want, yeah, I want to, like, normal people, like, yeah. to show them some of this stuff and be like, maybe yeah. there's something wrong with us. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it, is, but. Like, like, this movie made me question, like, everything about <laughs> what we do what on the I, weekend. We're just like, what are my tastes in life? I was like, like, what am I doing? What is this? Where are we right now? But in a good way, right? I don't know. So <laughs> as long as uh, hey, as long as the journey's <laughs> ongoing, that's fine. <laughs> this is a gross movie. You know? It's really gross. It combines things that shouldn't be combined, and I understand that that's kind of like draw. what they did. This was like an experimental kind of time for art. Um, you know, film was no exception. They, they, they were all trying things and they're like, how far can we push the envelope? How gross can we be? How taboo can we be? How can we take a well-known story and just make it even more fucked up than it already was? Cause it's kind of a crazy story anyway. Yeah. That we kind and, of just accept at this point. Cause like everyone right. was Frankenstein. Like everyone's yeah, like, right. you think about it, like yeah. that's fucked up. Like no seriously, like Frankenstein is yeah. like, it's classic literature at this yeah. point. It is, you know, it's, it's Hollywood royalty at this point. And, the, Basically, yeah. and yeah, it is a fucked up story. And Andy <laughs> and the people surrounding Andy Warhol were just like, how can we make it even more fucked up? <laughs> well, he should fuck his sister. Yes. They should have kids. They he should sh- fuck a gallbladder. Like, it's just bonkers it yeah. is i am not sure it's what we just watched movie. it is fucking crazy uh, oh I, i'm really not sure how i feel about it like because watching it i was like i hate it but it's kind of entertaining and i i'm not sure like i'm i'm really torn because i hated it but also like it's ridiculous (laughs) i think i found the perfect review on our bag of beer nuts right here a crazy crowd-pleasing mix of original nuts 
I mean, no, that's it. That's, that's perfect. Th- thank you, beer nuts. That's that's <laughs> what it is. Um, I really hate 3D, and Colin knows this. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Not like yeah, how'd that go over for you? I this really kinda, hate 3D. This is kind of stacked against Holly a little bit, I think. Yeah, like... I really don't like 3D. I, I find it very distracting. It's it, like I was, I've watched 3D before where it makes me feel like motion sick, but an older one like this where it's more like stabilized, um, it didn't make me feel sick. So that wasn't an issue. I just don't like it. I find it distracting. Um, also, I was wearing glasses over glasses, which sucks. <laughs> yeah, that always um, sucks. Man, fuck. <laughs> I, th- I think for our for our audience who's in the same wheelhouse that we're in, if they've never seen this type of movie, then I think they should experience it. Um, I agree. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's fucking weird, man. It's gonna stick with you. <laughs> but I no, like I'm not gonna. I mean, I forgot my own pick from a couple weeks ago, but right. I'm not gonna forget this gonna one. Forget this one. Okay. <laughs> so I at least gotta give you that. It's it did things that I've never seen before. It's really gross. I'm never watching this again. I will say that. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna watch this. Again. I'm never watching this again. <laughs> this, is, this is messed up. Um, yeah, for our listeners, if you if if anything we have said sounds appealing to you, then you should watch it. If it doesn't, then you shouldn't. I don't know where that leaves me. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe <laughs> right? You just like leave that's it at that. that's I, that's my recommendation. Like I, I can't. Sometimes you just need to continue figuring out your feelings for a movie right. beyond our night on the podcast. Like I feel like this. At least when I talk to my therapist, like it's never over. It's just like <laughs> it's an ongoing. It's, yeah, it's ongoing. The it's story const- continues. It's a constant. This movie is a constant, and I can't say one way or the other. So if, like I said, if you like what you heard, you should watch it. If you are horrified what you heard, you probably should skip it. And that's all I got. Colin. <laughs> there it is. Well, I mean, I guess that in some ways this did exactly what I, I like that there's a polarized, yeah. polarized kind of response to it. Because I was just kind of curious, you know, it, it seems. And I know, like, you know, when I'm on this podcast and I'm dogging on some movies, it, you know, it's like it, you need to have like a reference point, I guess, from where my state of thinking is. Right. And I'm like everything plays it safe in my mind when you you go like okay let's go it's clarifying let's show you you know like where (laughs) the edges are (laughs) right how far can you push holly yeah and (laughs) and where the edges have been sewn together (laughs) and so i I, um i mean did you did you think about it like okay it's 3d holly hates 3d holly doesn't have a gallbladder that's gonna trigger her <laughs> like did you think about these things well yeah, i mean yeah I mean, those are always every, the first two things i think about when i'm trying to pick a movie yeah holly's gallbladder yeah. and 3d yeah. but everything about I wonder this where movie, my gallbladder is now <laughs> i was i was kind of <laughs> curious how it was gonna go over because it was like i'm like this one is gonna be like just it's gonna strike people in you know you're gonna have gonna some kind her. of reaction to right. it good or bad um i guess it's extreme but there's a lot of quality on on display here it has like this really great i think score classical score the music is great i because it goes it's not it goes you, funny you, and no it goes weird like, you don't think so like, like a scientific you, move yeah you don't you don't think that it was like i mean there were moments that i really thought they were going to start singing Oh, uh, with like the yeah. there was a music box moment, or just like yeah. Like I really thought I, that I, Doc, I felt it. I really thought Doctor like, Frankenstein seconds, like, was oh. going to break into song, okay. oh. and I was like, "That seems no, like if, a comedic choice." No, I guess uh, maybe I I I, I know I, I know the, com- the scene you're talking about, yeah. but yeah, uh, it, the comedy really didn't work for me on this, by the way. Oh. So <laughs> I that's another thing. I always complain right about about comedy movies yeah they, right. they usually just don't work on me because i see like the setup and right. the mugging for the camera and the eventual punchline it's like i can see it coming so it doesn't surprise me and i think that's you know in comedy i need to be surprised in some way but this to me is my type of comedy like i thought this fucking movie was hilarious this is hysterical yeah uh <laughs> where it's just nuts. like <laughs> no this movie's hysterical you guys are crazy <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, like, there's a lot of just stuff where, and just, maybe do you it remember is... the scene when they were just like, <laughs> yeah, no, the eye, the eye acting is great in this. I'll give you that. Yeah, but eye it's all it's great. all aimed at like it's uh you know what would you call it yeah, arch I guess yeah. or like it's it's over the top you know where you can tell they're having a lot of fun doing the stuff that the, and Udo Kier is. I don't like, know if everyone was having fun during this movie. I don't know how that female monster no. felt during this movie. They all must I, have been very 
cold. Oh, I I can't imagine she had a good time with this movie. Yeah, because like wonder. in Italy, it uh, I do in, wonder. In, I always hear that because it was shot in Cinecitta or whatever, and I always hear that that's a cold place. Yeah. Uh, a castle in the cold is not good. Yeah. Um, she was, I think, a model. Uh, she has they gone on to are, do yeah. like other, yeah, you know, you know, nude model, right, or something like that. And she has gone on to do other things. And I don't know if on the special features they interviewed her or not, like for her participation in this movie. Um, they, I think they went and got everybody that they possibly could have remembered uh, doing it. And uh, oh yeah, I got to bring up uh, Antonio Margheriti. Margarete. There it is. Uh, we've talked about him before, uh, no numerous times, but specifically on our what was the movie that he did? Your Hunter from the, uh, from the Future yeah. and uh, the Green Slime, right? I think mm-hmm. it was. Uh, or no, he had he had either done that one or like the film series that Gamma Three or whatever that it was part of. Okay. But anyway, and, and and Quentin Tarantino used his name in the. Yeah. So apparently, <laughs> in Italy. Um, they used his name as the director on the posters. Like really? they said it was an Antonio Margaretti movie and, and didn't give it credit to Paul Morrissey. Like Paul oh. Morrissey complains so, that Andy uh, Warhol was like absent from this movie. And he hated the fact that like it was Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Like, yeah. He hated it. So he's like Andy Warhol didn't have anything to do with the movie. And uh, Carlo Rimbaldi, who was the effects guy who designed uh, E.T., and uh, he also did the King Kong, the Rick, uh, the Rick Baker, okay. King Kong uh, 76 uh, and Possession, which uh, we all love. <laughs> uh, he did the, the, the gore effects in this. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I, it, it feels like it's like a classically, you know, shot movie that I guess the only thing that kind of betrays its shooting schedule or budget is the fact that they're shooting mostly on the same sets. Mm. Um, but the scale of the sets, you know, the production design is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the, the photography, especially when you, you see it in 3d is like, it's great. Um, the performances are all over the map, you know, well, yeah. based on the skill of the, Hey, we're just going to get these people in here. But, um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of entertainment value for me in, in a movie like this. And I got, like I said, I don't know what that uh, says about me, but I, it doesn't, I, it's like I recognize it's gross, but it yeah. doesn't gross me out It because it's so over the top. I think that's what helps. Like, if you see something serious that's gross, it reads different. Like, I'm not so much of a fan of that yeah, kind of stuff. There but, was like, a- if it's, like, over gross, you know, I mean, we're talking gross, like, not so much a gore, although that is that. But just, like, the subject matter is gross. Yes. It's like, you know... Um, it's somehow easier to take, and I, I like it more when it's uh, absurd, you know. So there you go. That's uh, mm-hmm. it's absurd. And uh, yeah, I mean, it'll stick with you. Um, it'll to stick my with taste, you, it'll stick on you. It's gonna. Yeah. <laughs> to my taste, Blood of Dracula is not as good, but okay. uh, you know, again, you hear various opinions. There's people who prefer that one to this one. Um, you know, obviously, the companion pieces they were filmed together. They have mostly the same cast, and you know. Uh, so you should basically, uh, I, I, I would recommend that you check that one out as well. Uh, but I would recommend uh, Flesh for Frankenstein, a.k.a. Andy Warhol's Frankenstein in 3D. Mm-hmm. The 3D's great. Get, it's great, Holly. It's, it's great. Not, it's it's fucking great. shit comes it's off the goddamn great. screen, it's smacks great. you in the face with livers and nope. all sorts of fluids and... Yeah. No, did nothing for me. I really <laughs> wonder what Michaela would think about this movie. I know she missed out. God she, damn it. She might actually have uh yeah, dug this crazy I'm, I'm all for it. rewatching it with her, Colin. <laughs> it's on shutter. We'll give her a pair of 3D glasses and she can watch the red and blue one. Right there. <laughs> all right. So uh that was uh two four, one against and one absent abstain mm-hmm, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absentia, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh next week we are watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? We will be watching the movie May. May? May. I have that one. Angela Bettis. In oh. May. Yeah. May. Okay. okay. So it's about that time, right? Because we're, that's 20 years. Right? Is it? Oh, yeah, is was it 20? That, was that 2002? I think it was later than that. May? Yeah. We'll find I, out. I, I'm not, I wasn't sure of the year, but we'll find out. We'll okay. find out. All right. So it's time that one gets a kind of a revisit, I right? I think so. Yeah. All right, so we're going to watch May, Lucky McKee's May with Lucky Angela McKee, Bettis next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.